Hello everybody and welcome. Today I am very excited to talk to you about how you're going to use Unit 1 with your students, the very beginning of the year, the first chapter, the first unit, to set your class up for success. My name is Jeanette Stein and I am an expert in helping teachers that teach at-risk or struggling students how to do well. And so I'm excited to be with you today. And if you are here and joining us, I would love to um, welcome you. If you could put your name in the comments. And I'd like, love to have a question of the day just to get started and see how everybody's doing today. And so my question of the day today is how many students do you see each day? How many students do you see um, each day come through your classroom? So whether you, that is um, you have one self-contained classroom or you have uh, 30, 40 kids coming through your class each hour. I would love to know how many students do you see each day? And so I am just pulling this up real quick so that if you are commenting on here live, I'll be able to see your comments. And um, so if you see me looking down, I am checking my phone for those comments because it um, comes up more real time on my phone than it will on my computer. So again, if you're just joining us, we're gonna be talking about how to use the first unit, the first chapter, to really connect with your students, get your rhythm, and really get things off the ground and going really well. So the first tip that I would love to give you is to make a big picture plan. And what I mean by that is, in that first unit, there are going to be things that students understand, they're gonna find easier, they've learned something about it before, and there's things that are going to be brand new. And they're not all related to math. And so that's really important that we um, distinguish that, especially in unit one. They are learning so many things and all probably five, six, or seven of their classes, um, depending on how long your classes are. And so we wanna be really aware and set them up for success in unit one. So when I look at my unit one for algebra one, and we can talk about geometry as well, uh, unit one, I do all patterns and functions. So I'm introducing what's new to them. Function notation is new to them. Some of the quadratic functions, um, some of the um, more difficult linear equations may be new to them. Yes, they should have done them in eighth grade. What should they know? They should know how to solve a two-step equation. They should understand slope. They should understand how to evaluate a function, for example, or at least substitute uh, a quality in and be able to evaluate that, um, that expression. And so we are really looking for what is going to be super comfortable with them. If you're reviewing order of operations, let's say you are going into function notation. What I love to do is use function notation, but then review order of operations. So I'm only giving them something new. The function notation is what's new. The order of operations is what's reviewed. That way each day I have one new thing. So slope is another thing that they should have mastered. I usually use slope if I am going to introduce any sort of technology. So if I'm showing them a brand new program they've never used before, if we're learning how to log in, I make sure that it's something they already feel confident in. Because a lot of kids, we think they are all super great at technology, but unless it's on Instagram or Snapchat, uh, they're not real good with that. And so we need to teach them that. And so I like the content to be a little bit easier for them while they're learning the technology because they don't want that frustration level up so high that they're not learning any longer. So just making that big picture plan of what's new and what's not new can really alleviate a lot of frustration, not only for you, but for them as well. So what I would also like, the second tip I'd like to get give you is everybody knows to get to know their students, that it's very powerful if the students understand you, they know you, and you know something about them outside of math class, that you value them as a person. We all know that. How do you make time for that? So what I like to do is, just like I did with you, that question of the day. If you have a question of the day that you're asking students, I used to actually keep note cards and jot down little notes because what I noticed in, in a month it was really hard to remember on day two when I was so exhausted. So I would keep notes on the back of a note card with their name on it. 
it really helped me just to review. Oh yeah, I do know that. So when they walked in two weeks later, I could ask them how that was going. So if somebody had a BMX race, that was great. I had a struggling student who was really difficult for me. My nephew um, raced motorbikes and actually knew this this child, this um, young man. And so I was able to make that connection with him because I wrote it down on the note card. The next time I talked to my nephews, I was able to say, hey, do you know him? And they sure did. And so I could go back and say, wow, my nephew said you're a great rider. You know, tell me more about this. I'd love to learn more. Uh, that, he worked so hard for me um, after that. And so, yes, he was behind, but because he kept working, we really made great strides. So just use a couple of those tips, maybe a question of the day, something they like. Um, I mean, keeping some just short notes, maybe on your seating chart or somewhere else. And um, also bringing it back up. So bringing back those things you've learned and bring them back up later and build on that. Uh, it just shows that you're not just asking the questions like every, you know, some kids get really callous to that. Yeah, I have a bunch of teachers ask me this. They don't even remember. What's the point? If you bring it back up later, it's really going to get you a lot of points. So I'm wondering in your classroom, as part of that, do you use any team building? I would love to hear if you do. If you don't mind sharing with other teachers, this is something I get asked a lot about how to do team building. And I do have another uh, video planned on that. But if you have some ideas, I would love to hear them. I'd love to add them to what we've got going as well. And then the last thing is for your struggling learners, really encouraging them. And one way that I really encourage them from the first day of school, as I said, who here does not think they're good at math? And I might even say that on parent night. You know, and I get parents raise their hand, which drives me crazy because I don't want them saying that in front of their children. But then I go and debunk that. So I say, you know, a lot of people feel like they're not very good at math just because they didn't do it the way the teacher told them to do it. And so um, because they um, didn't do it exactly like the textbook said, but they were still a great problem solver and figured out another way to do it, I tell them, well, that just tells me a lot about your problem solving skills. That tells me a lot about your perseverance. And I really build that up. Now, I work with that differently in my lesson plan. So when we go through our activities, kids come up with all sorts of ways to do things. I like to encourage them there. I like to tell them, wow, that's really creative. I didn't think of it, unless they're really getting the wrong answer. You know, they're getting the right answer by a wrong method. For example, dividing by two instead of taking the square root of four, for example. Um, there's some mathematical errors there and I fix those, but if they can do it in another way, it might take longer. And then I'll teach them the algorithm and I teach them the word algorithm and I teach them the word shortcut uh, and it really speeds it up for them. But because they're so willing to learn at that point, it works out really, really well. So are there topics that your students are struggling with? that possibly they believe they're not good at or not willing to try because they were told before they did it wrong. Take a look at that and maybe you can use that strategy. Um, just because you did it different doesn't make it wrong, but we do need to know this system because of the time factor. And so we're gonna sh learn some shortcuts for that. And sometimes just saying it that way in a non-threatening way can really make a positive effect on your kids. So today we talked about using unit one to be able to connect with our students, set our students up for success, get our routines. We talked about looking at the big picture. What do they know? What will they find easy? What is brand new? Whether content or technology or routines, whatever that is. We talked about getting to know your students and some t tips for doing that. And then you're gonna share with me in the comments, I hope, some of the different ways that you can do that as well. And so, um, I am definitely having some technology errors. I can see that um, we've got some comments and I'd love to see them and all of a sudden it got blocked. Um, and then the last one is there's not just one way to do math. And so if your students are struggling right now, please know that um, they can overcome that, build them up when they get creative with their problem solving. That's only gonna help them to listen, try, persevere in when it gets harder or even now, right now, if we can get them on the right track, get them into the habit of working for you, that's gonna be wonderful. 
If you would like a unit one bonus to get you through this first unit one, if you're just getting started in your school year and you're kind of struggling, if you would like every bell ringer and practice page and exit slip as well as some assessments for unit one for algebra and geometry, we have some full packs. Um, I am going to put a link in the comments as soon as I get off here. And I will make sure, um, if you go ahead and just put your email in there, because it is such a large document, the Algebra 1 document is over 200 pages. Um, it is for four weeks of content. The Geometry unit is three weeks of content. And so they are very large documents. So I will email you a link back to the site where you can download it, because the email, it would just take forever to download from there. And that way it's housed right on my site. So just drop in your email, and I will give you both of those. Um, that's absolutely free just for joining me on here. I'm so grateful for everybody who's willing to join me on here, um, especially during the day. Good heavens. But if you're watching the replay, still please leave the comments. I love to reply to them. And I will be jumping on as soon as I'm done here to reply to those in just a few minutes. So thank you so much and have a great day. And I look forward to seeing you again soon.